investing in media content production is becoming really high for private equity funds. Um, even in a downturn, private equity money is current is picking Hollywood as a smart bet. And these investment firms now view star-driven production banners and also major sound stages as a long-term play in a crowded content marketplace. So how did this happen? Why the sudden change of heart since finance people previously always viewed investing in media content production as a very risky bet as best? Is this all-in investment strategy in media content production implemented by private equity funds, financially sound? So private equity is really doubling down on Hollywood. Uh, it, after dipping their toes in the water through the talent agencies, so such as TPG, which owns a major stake in uh, CAA, Creative uh, Artist Agency, and Silver Lake, for example, which is the largest external shareholder in Endeavor, Endeavor being the uh, competitor of CAA. So they, the uh, private equity fund started by investing in these talent agencies. Basically, of course, these talent agencies advise top directors, top uh, actors, et cetera, et cetera. And now these investment firms from the private equity uh, sector are on a spending spree, really. And uh, they are snapping up stakes in production entities or financing new vehicles in like former Disney execs, Kevin Myers and Tom Stagg's Candle Media to do the buying for them. So for example, Candle Media is backed by billions of dollars from Blackstone. And it has already purchased stakes in Reese Witherspoon's production company, Hello Sunshine, currently for a reported $900 million. And uh, Candle Media has also invested in Will and Jada Pickensmith's Westbrook Media. Candle Media also has bought outright Coco Melon owner Moonbug and Foda producer Faraway Road. So right now, I'm basically letting you know about a lot of names and um, you know um, uh, bouncing around a lot of uh, 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 words and franchises in the entertainment industry in the private uh, equity sector. If you want to actually have a look at um, written content so that you can actually go to all the websites of these companies I'm mentioning. You just need to <clears throat> register to uh, one of our subscription plans on crefovie.com slash store or from the French version on crefovie.fr slash magasin. So in June 2022, um, Shamrock Capital invested $50 million into religion of sports the studio co-founded by Gautam Chopra, the, uh, the son of uh, the famous yoga, <clears throat> yoga uh, guru, uh, Deepak Chopra, Tom Brady, the uh, American football star, and Michael Strahan. So these are two examples um, of uh, how private equity is investing into the um, production companies of stars. Um, but what's happening, uh, another example of uh, private equity investment in the entertainment sector is that in December 2022, the Hollywood Reporter reported that Redbird Capital Partners formed a joint venture with Abu Dhabi-based private e equity fund International Media Investments, pouring an initial committed capital of $1 billion into the new venture called Redbird IMI which will see former CNN and NBC Universal CEO Jeff Zucker acquiring and building companies in the sports, media, and entertainment sectors. Both companies are already heavily invested in the media content production sector with Redbird owning stakes in entertainment ventures like diversified content production studios, Skydance Media, also LeBron James Spring Hill, as well as Ben Affleck's and Matt Damon's artist equity so as the new production uh, um, company. IMI, meanwhile, the Abu Dhabi-based fund, owns a stake in Euronews as well as Sky News Arabia, which is a joint venture with uh, Sky News. Um, 
the Village Roadshow and Shonin Entertainment, Shonin being spelled S-H-E-R-N-I-N from the uh, surname of, his, uh, of its founder. So Village Roadshow and Shonin Entertainment, sensing opportunity, have also begun to explore their options. The North Road Company, Peter Shonin's production roll-up, is being financed by $500 million US dollars from Providence Equity Partners, and $300 million in debt from Apollo through its managed affiliates. Shonin said in July 2022 that he is now in the market for further acquisitions, leveraging the private equity cash to buy pure play companies that focus solely on creating content. So what is causing this gold rush? Look no further than the annual Peak TV data released by FX Networks in January 2022. The data showed that in 2021, broadcast and cable channels, as well as streaming services, presented 559 English language scripted series, a new record, and a 13% jump from pandemic impacted 2020. There is a high demand for supply of unique, high quality content to drive new eyeballs and subscriptions. And at the same time, a lot of companies still need to program linear TV channels. Therefore, the bet from private equity is that original programming, especially programming from blue chip talent or independent studios, will not diminish anytime soon and may even continue to increase as streaming services seek to stand out and compete with each other in the era of streaming consolidation. In other words, Peak TV has not peaked yet. Yeah, because um, as mentioned in our other article um, published on uh, our restricted content area, which you can subscribe to through our membership um, subscription plans, so we have uh, uh, released in the last few weeks an article about film distribution media in which we highlight that the, you know, the uh, streaming platforms can't go on with like 250 streaming platforms. There must be some consolidation in, in the streaming sector. Therefore, there's a lot of competition from streamers to acquire the best content. And that is why there is so, so much request for content at the moment as well. Another interesting aspect of this spree from private equity funds into the uh, uh, into content production is that they are making a lot of infrastructure purchases so they are buying sound stages and physical studios um, as well so the thesis that demand for content will continue to surge has also led to investment firms buying up sound stages and physical studios so what are sound stages well sound stages are the sort of green rooms that you can see um, you know, in, in, in when, when you see some, uh, some pictures of uh, film production reels or uh, uh, bloopers, and you can see like a, a completely red um, green room, that this is, this is done in a sound stage, right? Or this um, um, CGI um, enhanced um, uh, production. It, so that's what sound stages are. So at the moment, these private equity funds are investing in uh, sound stages and physical studios as well. So for example, Hackman Capital, the Los Angeles-based real estate investment and operating company, purchased Kaufman Astoria Studios and Silver Cup Studios in New York, as well as Los Angeles CBS Studios City Lot, and has purchased or is developing studio space in Scotland and Toronto, among other places. Meanwhile, TPG purchased Studio Babelsberg in Germany and Domain Capital Group is developing a new studio in Georgia in the US. The private equity firm's logic with the studio and sound, soundstage buys is that the real estate will appreciate in value while the nonstop demand in film and TV productions provide steady and stable cash flow. Now, a focus on the European market. Well, we've noticed in uh, May 2022 during uh, the Cannes Film Festival that private equity is also on the croisette. So investors are bullish on indie films, particularly in Europe. Indeed, with a broader trend of so-called smart money placing its bets on content, the 2022 Cannes Film Festival was a stage set 
for some of the biggest players packaging projects and inking deals backed by private equity groups last May 2022. Indeed, very prominent on the Crozet were prominent mini majors, Leonine and Media One, both bankrolled by KKR and Anton, the Anglo-French producer financier sales outfit run by Sébastien Rebaud, which has tapped private equity to fund productions such as Jared Butler's Actioner Greenland and can market projects Canary Black, which is a spy thriller from Taken director Pierre Morel starring, starring Kate Beckinsale and Femme, a LGBTQ plus revenge thriller featuring George McKay and uh, Nathan Stewart Jarrett. So meanwhile, the teams from Vine Alternative Investments portfolio companies, Village Roadshow, Europa Corp and Lakeshore Entertainment were all sharing a tent in Cannes last May, 2022. So private equity investments are definitely coming to Europe, riding the wave of European content consum consumption growth, driven by the explosion in streaming services and platforms offered to European customers, as well as the mandatory European Union uh, content quotas for SVOD platforms. So just to clarify on this, uh, EU law makes it mandatory for streaming platforms that want to broadcast their streaming in uh, Europe, in the 27, sorry, member states of the European Union, that they must have at least 30% of all content on these streaming services uh, European made. Okay, so... Uh, of course, such a mandatory EU requirement guarantees demand for original homegrown films and series, which most streamers will be unable to fill on their own. So therefore, there's a big push uh, for European produced content. And this is why private equity funds are now positioning themselves on the European market to take advantage of that, because it's like, it's like a bond from a government bond, because, you know, you know, uh, at least 30% of, of content needs to be European bond made, European made. So the opportunities for independent studios based in Europe with access to original intellectual property and private equity capital has never been greater, have never been greater, sorry. Instead of inking an exclusive output deal with a single streamer, such as Steven Spielberg's Amblin Partners or Spike Lee's 40 Acres and the Mule Filmworks, have all done with Netflix, many creative um, creatives are now using private equity's backing to stay independent and sell their wares to the highest bidder, in particular at film markets like Cannes. It is telling that the new Cannes Film Festival president from 2023 onwards will be Iris Knockblotch, the head of I2PO, a private equity backed special purpose acquisition company, a SPAC, set up in 2021 by François Pinault of Caring fame. So that's the second biggest luxury conglomerate in the world, Caring. And so François Pinault is one of the investors into this PAC, I2PO, with Mathieu Pigas, who is a sort of French uh, media uh, magnate with, uh, 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 who owns uh, several media outlets in France, such as Le Monde, Les Inrecuptibles, Radio Nova, and Media One, that I mentioned before for the purpose of acquiring entertainment companies across Europe. So there's a lot going on in Europe, you know, to position themselves on the um, on this uh, private equity investment in the entertainment sector and in particular on media production. So what are the distribution and downturn risks of, uh, of these such investments? Well, there is a, a, a heavy reliance on streamers and also there is a risk of low valuations. So let me explain what I mean by that. However, even the flush with all their new private equity cash, the indies and other media content producers remain dependent on the global streamers for distribution. Also, it is a known fact in the movie business that it has never been possible to scale a content business if you do not own your distribution. If streamers move away from licensing films and shows from third parties in favor of producing the bulk of a content in-house, or if an influx of new private equity capital inflates the cost of production beyond profitability due to fast rising interest rates and heavy reliance on debt financing, 
The current growth market for indies and other media content producers and they appeal as private equity investments may vanish. So talent like Weaverspoon, Reese Weaverspoon or Will, Will Smith and uh, are on board with a private equity cash, knowing that their financial backers have deep pockets and are willing to sell the TV to TV channel and streaming services, willing to cut the best deal. By contrast, Every entertainment conglomerate is increasing, creating is increasingly creating film and TV shows first and foremost for their own services. Not only that, but with fears of a recession mounting, companies like Netflix, Warner Brothers, Discovery, and Disney have indicated that they would be more prudent with their content investments. However, they desire to work with name brand talent or producers remain, ensuring that. Firms like Spring Hill and Elo Sunshine stay in demand. Meanwhile, a potential economic downturn could force media firms to take a close look at their valuations for companies that do not necessarily need the capital and are selling minority stakes. The lower valuations justified by the current market may not meet expectations, leading some founders to wait things out until conditions improve but a downturn also could bring opportunities of its own. Even if private entertainment and production companies get spooked by low valuations, the public markets could provide them with new opportunities. Could, for example, Lionsgate be in play once it uh, completes its spin-off of stars? So yes, there's some speculation on the market that um, the uh, big, uh, film production company Lionsgate, like a mini major Lionsgate really, um, may actually introduce itself in uh, the public uh, capital markets uh, once it has completed uh, its uh, spin-off from the um, streaming service stars. So this is the first time in at least five years where there are real opportunities in the public markets. So for firms spending big, to gobble up content and production companies, it could lead to bargains that are hard to pass up. That's it from me this week. Thank you again so much for joining us and um, see you next week. Bye.